Cambridge has begun a 25-year net zero action plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in buildings. The city has taken several steps to meet this goal to reduce emissions in several sources. Today we're going to look at three examples of the city's sustainability efforts, beginning with Sam Corder, who's going to meet me on the roof of the Water Department. Wow, this is fantastic. First off, tell me where we are right now. We're at the Cambridge Water Department, uh, the treatment plant where we house all of the equipment used to um, provide clean water to all the residents of Cambridge. And speaking of equipment, we're surrounded here by these solar panels. Tell me how they work. What a solar panel does, it takes direct sunlight and converts it into um, direct current. And then we have an inverter uh, down below that converts the direct current into alternating current. And that is what typically is in a home and provides us with our electricity needs. So how much energy do these panels generate? They generate over 200,000 kilowatt hours per year. And what that's a portion of the energy that we use. We typically use around 8 million kilowatt hours per year here at the water department. And what that powers is uh, a variety of pumps and equipment as well as uh, PCs and lighting here at the department. Well, thanks, Sam. Thank you for showing me how these panels work and what they do. And next, we're going to be going to Steve Lankowskis at the electrical department. He's going to be talking to us about lighting. Hi, Steve. Hi, Tony. Thanks how for meeting me today. It's a pleasure. You are the city electrician for the city of Cambridge. Tell me what Cambridge is doing to reduce the energy levels and street lights. Uh, back in uh, 2014, the city decided to change all their street lights to LED street lights. Um, and we decided to do that in a couple of phases. The first phase was to retrofit the 5,000 street lights. Uh, and the second phase was to swap out all the decorative and park fixtures. And included in those two phases, was the installation of an adaptive lighting system. And tell me what adaptive lighting is. Uh, adaptive lighting is where we are able to control each individual light and dimming at certain hours of the night. And using the adaptive lighting, we're able to apply many different schedules to adapt to different types of environments. And we've achieved quite a bit of savings on that end of it. Like how much has the city saved? Changing the LED lights out, we're looking at saving 50%. With the adaptive lighting system, we've achieved up to almost 80% in savings. That's incredible. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Now we're going to go speak with Kristen Middleton at the Martin Luther King Jr. School to talk about what sustainability efforts are happening over there. So Kristen Middleton, you are the Sustainability Manager for Cambridge Public Schools. Yes, that's correct. Tell me what that means. Sure. Well, the sustainability position um, comes from the Office for Sustainability, which we founded seven years ago for the Cambridge Public School Department. And we oversee environmental sustainability because the school district is committed to reducing its carbon footprint. And so tell me what type of things are happening here at the Martin Luther King Jr. Putnam a Upper School. Sure. Well, this building opened in December of 2015 and was designed by Perkins Eastman. It's a lead platinum building. And we're happy to talk about, you know, how much energy we've saved. So, for example, these solar panels that you see around the building are providing for almost 45% of the school's entire energy use. It's amazing. That's incredible. Now tell me about this rooftop garden here that we're having the pleasure to walk around. Yeah, well this garden is in partnership with City Sprouts, which is a nonprofit organization that brings school gardens to life. And it allows our students to learn about the environment in a very hands-on way. So they're growing this food and eating it and learning about what it means to compost and to take care of nature. That's great. Let's go yeah. take a look at some other places here. Yeah, sounds great. So now we're in the basement, and we call this the mechanical room? Correct, yeah, it's the mechanical room. And it's a little noisy, but that's because the school has a very unique water supply system. Tell me about that. Sure. So this is our gray water system. And what's so amazing about this system and what makes it environmentally sustainable is that we catch the rainwater and we use recycled rainwater to flush all of our toilets. 
So if you go into any bathroom in the school and flush the toilet, it's recycled water. And tell me about some of the other water features that you have here in the school that help with the sustainability efforts. Sure, well we like to conserve water, so all of our faucets um, are low flow fixtures, so that way people aren't using more water than they need to. That's incredible. All yeah. right, let's see what else you have. Yeah, one more thing. So here we are now in the cafeteria, Kristen. Talk to me about what's happening here. Sure. Well, we have a state-of-the-art waste reduction system here in this cafeteria. Um, as with all schools in the school district, we have full-scale composting and recycling. So part of the way we reduce our carbon footprint is by making sure that our food scraps go in the compost, only wrappers go in the trash, and then we recycle all other materials, such as you know, plastic bottles, milk cartons, and any material that can be recycled. So in this way, we prevent a lot of waste from making its way to a landfill or incinerator. And by creating new soil through compost, we're actually helping to sequester carbon and reduce our carbon footprint. That's incredible. Well, Kristen, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. You're welcome. So as you can see, the city is doing a lot to reduce energy in several areas. If you want to learn more, go to our website at cambridgema.gov climate.